There are two things certain in this world. Death and me making another Blocktails video because you guys absolutely love Blocktails and will not stop talking about Blocktails. And because hard mode is taking a little bit longer than expected, I'm gonna go ahead and raid every single card inside Blocktails. It is important to know, however, I have not used every single card nor near anywhere near. And I'm also a cannonball meta chud, so maybe just maybe you might disagree with me on some of these takes. And if you do disagree or agree, you should definitely subscribe because I'm trying to hit a million. Let's get started. All right, here we have the list. Now, I just want to say I didn't make this tier list. Uh, I just looked up a template and this is what it gave me. And low key, I really like it because they actually kind of put everything in color coded order. Or I wouldn't say color coded order, more like weapon category order. So yeah, I, you know, a pretty amazing. But first things first, we have the default ball attack. Is there anything else that I need to say about? This is like low key for what it gives you in the early game. The ball is absolutely OP. The ability to hit somebody twice with the ball, it's amazing. It, it really is. But next what we have, I'm pretty sure is line bounce. And line bounce, oh boy, oh boy. If you're a slave to the metal like I am, this is a must have in your deck. I mean, we all know what line bounce does. It just bounces from one person to the other. And it's an amazing crowd control card. I, once again, I, I I know I just put the first two cards in S, but like, to be fair, this is like the most goaded opening of all time. Now, Fireball, I'm pretty sure Fireball is just a regular attack like this, except it just puts them on fire. Now, it does cost SP. I really haven't seen anybody use this in a deck unless they're going for a specific type of build. You know, it, I mean, burning's cool, but to be honest with you, I never really enjoyed the burn debuff. In fact, I don't really enjoy any debuff besides poison. So I'm just going to have to put this in C. Look, if you're doing a fire build, I'll by all means use it. But I, I just don't really see it. You know what is pretty useful? The snowball one. Or I'm, I'm, Is this called snowball? I hope it's called snowball. Yeah, it is called snowball. Amazing. It's an interesting one because it has the chance to freeze an opponent. And freezing an opponent takes away one of their turns. Low key, it might be an A tier. This would be the only ball I would use outside of like the basic cannonball meta. Daze. It makes an enemy dizzy for three turns. Now, I'm pretty sure Daze is kind of like a one-way system with like uh, comatose. In fact, we're going to rank these together. So essentially, the only situation where sleep and dizzy would really come in handy is if you're trying to keep somebody out of a fight. But I could be wrong. You might be able to use dizzy and actually keep somebody out, but it just seems a little bit OP if you can make it last for three turns. But yeah, I'm honestly going to put this in C. Once again, I mean, like the whole sleeping and days thing, it's great. But in all in all, I really don't see it being used in any kind of setup. All right, softener. I assume this one just lowers somebody's defense. In a lot of RPG games or like turn-based RPGs, lowering defense is actually a really, really solid card. So if you're like debuff Andy, I would say, you know, this is pretty balanced right here. I mean, you can't go wrong with lowering a person's defense. Minimum eyes okay honestly it low-key falls into the same thing as everything else you know i mean the, the shrinking debuff is cool but it only lasts for like two turns and but it does reduce their attacking damage but once again attacking damage doesn't matter in this game as long as you're dodging your shots low-key i might put this in d you really don't need it all right cannonball oh you guys know my stance on cannonball cannonball s tier item easy this lineup right here ball line bounce cannonball if you don't know what cannonball does it it makes it so your ball can't pop against certain enemies so you can basically use baller for everything it's amazing you know it's you know it's another good one the basic sword attack Honestly, I'm going to put this in A. If you're going for a sword build, I don't think they're as powerful as a baller build. But for some early game damage, sword does do the trick pretty well. But you know what's even better than sword? Good old power stab. Power stab is an amazing, amazing, amazing. I love power stab so much. It is an amazing early game item you can get, and it does a lot of damage. You can never go wrong with power stab and sword, to be honest with you. Sword toss. Now that I think about it, if I ever use sword toss in an actual like situation, look, it's cool, but what's the point of sword toss? It <laughs> low key, it's kind of useless. But I guess if you're going sword only, you know, it's not useless. That's gonna make some sword meta people, you know, mad. So I'll put it in D tier because it's just not, you know what? Like, oh, here's another one. Oh, here's a here's an amazing passive right here. 
Baller. Oh my god, baller. Baller is an amazing item because if you are going for baller, it adds extra damage to your ball and removes the ability to use your sword. However, if you have cannonball, it doesn't matter. So you combine these two cards together and it's the craziest synergy of all time. Same thing with knight. Knight's another S tier. It essentially adds damage by removing baller. Is there anything more to say? It's a really good passive. I see, I see this one used a lot. Rocket Launcher. Rocket Launcher is an interesting one because it's one of the only items in this game to do a pretty reasonable amount of splash damage. When compared to a good setup to like baller or a good sword setup, I think it gets outclassed. However, it's something very simple. You don't really have to do a build around it. It's nice and easy. It's like an all-in-one slingshot. Now, slingshot, I have personally have never used. But I don't know, and I don't want to be that guy. And I don't want to make somebody mad by putting it where it's not supposed to be. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in don't know, haven't used. Ooh, anti-up. Boy, oh boy, do I love anti-up. It's honestly low-key one of the best items in the entire game. I'll go in and show you guys what it does. It makes shots harder to hit. However, if you have the timing down, it doesn't matter. It's amazing. Combine this with literally anything. This is a must-have in a deck. So I'm actually going to put anti all the way up here. In fact, I should probably reorganize some of these. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with what, what we have so far. All right. Now we're on to these four. These are all cosmetics. All they do is just change the sound that plays when you hit, get hit or hit something. So I don't want to rank this because like it's just cosmetic. And shrinking. Oh, okay. Once again, shrinking is one of those ones where you, you have to use it to get around certain places. Honestly, shrinking is a really good thing. It's balanced though. It's not OP. It's not that crazy. But you know what is pretty crazy? If you have the SP to run it, <laughs> dynamite. I see a lot of people running dynamite pretty constantly. It's expensive. I will say for what it is, I think it's balanced. It's expensive, but it, it packs a punch and it does splash damage. And you know, it's also pretty balanced rocket boots. Another great addition to the game. I don't think there's anything wrong with rocket boots. I don't think anybody has ever said that they need to nerf it. So I'm just not going to touch it. It's going to go and be for balance. All right, our next card here is the shield thingy. Low key, if you're running this in a deck, I, I really don't think you, you really shouldn't be running this in a deck. No, I'm sorry. I'm so stupid. Defense by default in your deck, okay? It is by default. It, it, it goes B for balance. It's in there for default. I'm thinking of the of these extra ones, which we'll get to in a second. But this, it's perfectly fine. Uh, Switch? Yeah, Switch. It just allows you to change it. Once again, B for balance. It's not really a crazy thing. Uh, Fleeing, once again, B for balance. Allows you to run away. It'd be stupid to put any of these like passive or just like these mechanical cards that you need to function for the game in anything other than balance. Oh, but you know what's pretty OP? You know what isn't balanced? A good old charge up, baby. Oh my God. It goes in the same thing as anti up. You combine two of these, you get a good synergy going. You get two extra damage. Combine that with anti up. Combine that with baller. It's a, you already have an amazing deck. You know, these, these four cards alone could carry an entire run. All right. What is this next card? What is this actually? Seriously, what? What is this supposed to be? Safeguard? Uh, it's a passive. Once again, I just don't think it's useful. This is just a filler card. You know, I understand if you have problems dodging, but once you learn the movements and all that stuff in terms of like later games, this isn't going to save you. In fact, none of these are going to save you because all they do is just give you defense. And as long as you can dodge, it shouldn't matter how much damage you do. Now, what does Defender do? I forgot what Defender does. Yeah, no, this is... F tier. This is disgusting. This is at, like you should not you should not be using defender when used in battle It'll grant the player one defense, but take away one attack. Absolutely useless You should worry about your offense more than your defense because if you can beat somebody to the punch There's you don't need defense the hard ones just heal, right? It just gives you heal. This is a really good early game uh, thing. I'm just going to put it in C tier because me personally, when I ran through block tips, I really wasn't healing that much. I didn't need to. Next one is happy SP. This one is a, it seems like a good passive. To be honest with you, you probably don't need it. it I'm going to put it in D tier because I, I can see somebody using this. However, I just don't see the viability, you know, as I said, offense over everything.
two seconds later. All right, after blowing up my bathroom, I am now back. All right, HP plus. Now this one, honestly, HP plus, I'm gonna put this in ace here. I use this quite frequently throughout my playthrough and it's gotten me through a lot of fights. Resurrect. Okay, well, this is obviously an easy, easy S tier. I mean, it's a resurrect a fallen enemy. It's the only item in the game that does it. So yeah. HP Drain. Ooh, this is a good one. Now, depending on what you're building, this could be crazy. You get the ability to get one HP per successful attack. Does that mean, does that scale? Does that synergize with line bounce? This sounds almost too good to be true. Somebody correct me in the comments, but if this actually works with line bounce, that would be the craziest thing ever. And it only costs one card slot. For what you're getting, that just seems that seems way too good to be true. There's no way. HP Finder. Get more HP than usual after winning battles. <laughs> useless. I mean, it's a passive. It costs... Okay, maybe I shouldn't say useless. Because it does only cost one. I'll put it in D tier. Happy SP. Ooh, baby. Honestly, it's pretty balanced. I would, I would run it, honestly. SP is very important. If you can keep your SP generation up while also keeping your SP cost down, amazing. You can do a lot of fun things with this. So it's balanced. I think it just belongs there. You, you know, it's not balanced though. SP plus low key putting this in S tier. I love SP plus. The more SP you can do, the more dynamite you can spam, the more everything you can spam. You know what? Maybe I shouldn't put this in S tier. I'll put this in A tier. It's great in the early game, kind of falls off in the later game because you already have a bunch of SP, but pretty good. SP wire, what is what does this do? Transfers five SP to another player. Once again, it's only good in parties. Low key, I've never seen anybody run this. Probably useless. I don't think you'll ever see anybody ever running this one. Oh, oh my God. All right, SP saver decreases the needed SP for an ability by one. For what it does and for how much it costs, it is useless. It is so useless. It costs six cards to use for what? One less SP? I don't know anybody who'd want to actually use that. Uh, SP regen plus uh, for defending. Once again, I just, I just don't see the use in it. I really don't. Don't run defense. Go offensive. All right, this one's called pity SP. What does this do? Grants five SP but lose eight HP. Ooh, this one, this one's a spicy one. I'm gonna put it in C tier. I can definitely see the use of it because once again, if you're not taking damage and you can dodge everything, in theory, you could be running one HP and you'd be perfectly fine. Ooh, SP drain. I might have to, I don't know. I don't know if I'd put this up on the same level as, well, I guess I will. Yeah, it's the same thing. I feel like health is a little bit more useful, but I guess if, in theory, if line bounce does synergize with these, I get, you could be you could be farming infinite SP. Uh, I'm pretty sure this one is just like this one, except a little bit better. Gaining a small amount of SP a little bit more after each fight, it's a little bit different from HP. I mean, HP, yeah, it's cool, but you need all the SP you can get. Low-key gonna put this in B for balance. Uh, sacrifice, this one could be good if you're running a tank build. Essentially what it does, you sacrifice five of your HP, but you heal your entire party by five. I'm gonna put this in D tier. I don't really see the practicality in it when you can just buy a party healing item. Okay, now, now this is where you kind of lost me with these. So I gotta figure out what these are. Oh, it just makes you sleep. Okay, it's like Snorlax essentially. I don't really see the use in this. Just heal. Just heal. Item plus. Boost item effects by 30%. It could be good. Doesn't cost a card slot, so I don't... I don't know. Don't know. I haven't used... Uh, prayer. Pray and find out what happens. It gives it a random effect to all players or all enemies and players. Okay. This, this, is, this is a meme item. It's a, it's a funny one. I'll put this in C tier because it's funny. Uh, Tix Investor easy s tier makes farming so much easier this is a must have when you're farming you need it you need it uh thorns you don't need it you don't need it uh so yeah it's just kind of eh. all right now we're kind of getting into the realm of like stuff that doesn't really affect the game that much lucky start what does this do 
low key kind of good how much does it cost maybe not it costs way too much for it to be good however it has a chance of giving you hp regeneration sp regeneration or dodging ability uh for the entire game or at least for the entire fight uh it kind of costs a lot though so i'm gonna put this in d tier yes the regeneration and all that stuff is cool but it takes it's it, it takes too much away for it to be useful uh dodge easy s tier uh, essentially what this does it basically plays a sound it doesn't cost anything it just plays a sound and it's pretty nice this is a this is a good for a glass cannon build but in terms of like practicality i'm gonna put this in c essentially it gives you extra damage for having low health but most players are not teetering at the low edge of health feel fine cure and prevent status ailments Pretty B for balance. Every RPG game has some kind of card like this. It's pretty nice. Ooh, here's fun. Right here, we have the poison ability and we have the ice ability. Honestly, I really enjoy these two debuffs. As I said before, I think these two debuffs are the best. I love it. Bugs detector, not really useful in any battle, but it's cool for finding, you know, bugs. Uh, all this stuff that makes the game objectively harder, I'm gonna just throw in I don't wanna rank this. Doesn't really help out. Here's a funny one. Uh, less noticed by enemies, but you're slow. <laughs> I, I guess B for balanced. Pretty good to be honest with you. Yeah, here's another good one. Uh, speed spin, this is a must have. I'm gonna just put this in, just not gonna rank it. It's just a passive. And here we go. We have the ice shank, venom shank, and uh, the focus. All right, first of all, can we just agree that these two are easily S tier? These are these are essential. I mean, you fight, you do so much for these items. The Venom Shank in general is just busted. But the ability to regenerate HP and SP at the same time without using any mana or anything like that, pretty good. And then focus, I'm just going to put it in B for balance because, you know, it takes away a turn. But yeah, that's my list. Let me know if you agree with it. But I, I will say this is a pretty good list and I had a lot of fun making it. My editor's not gonna have a lot of fun editing this though. So yeah. But anyway, guys, if you guys enjoyed this tier list, I hope to see you guys in the next one and enjoy the rest of you guys' day. Bye-bye.